All right, so here's the story. I was trying to figure out how to fill the inside of a object in Blender using geometry nodes and fill it with points so I can do some cool stuff with. So I found a video by Antagma and safe to say I gave up before I started. It was so complicated. Shout out to Antagma. But to my surprise, I continued to research and I found a node that was recently added to Blender that no one's talking about and I absolutely love because you can do so many cool things with it. So I'm gonna show you what the node is, show you what you can do with it, and we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. Real Time Materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so we're in Blender 3.6, and uh, that's what, I'm not exactly sure where they implemented it, but it's always good to have the latest version. Anyway, this is the character I'm using, and you can use anything from a logo, a primitive object, whatever you want. Uh, so here's how it's going to work in Geometry Nodes. Go ahead and create a new Geometry, geometry Nodes tree, can't speak today, um, up here in this uh, shortcut here. And what I'm going to do, we're gonna get the mesh to volume, and here we go, this is what we're working with. Now you can see how it's very puffy and far bigger than uh, you know originally. So what we're gonna do is bring this exterior bandwidth all the way down to zero, and that's gonna show you what you had originally. Distribute points in volume. This is the node that I'm so excited about. We'll throw it in there, and now you can see some points. You can go ahead and bring up that density. It'll start to form your original mesh. So what I'm gonna do is get a instance on points, and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the icosphere as our object, and you can bring that radius down. And what you have to do now is bring up that density, and uh, you can bring it on this one as well. It's much more hyperactive on this side. And this is what we're doing here. All right, so I went ahead and threw a noise texture and a color ramp onto the scale of the instance on points so that you can really see a very quick demonstration of how cool this is. Uh, but this isn't the only one. Check it out. So we have random. You're seeing a random setup here. Um, but what you can do is switch it over to grid. And then I'm gonna go ahead, highlight and do 0 0.02 to show you, here we go. It's almost like remeshing it in a really weird way. We'll do 0 0.03, a little bit lighter on the remesh. And then we can just bring this color in. Then. So this is also another very interesting way to fill the grid. And here's what's fun. Now we're here, we, this is the video's done. <laughs> we, you can now go home and play with this, video's over. But let me show you, you can do some really interesting things with it. So as you can see, I threw a noise texture and a color ramp on the scale. And if you play with the W, you can then have a lot of fun with this right here. Uh, but let me show you how I created this animation uh, just very quickly. Let's throw any kind of geometry into your scene and we're gonna go ahead and get in the volume cube. Distribute points in volume, of course, and change this from random to grid. So now we have a nice grid going on, which is super cool. Instance on points, and let's go ahead and create a cube. I'm gonna go ahead and create a bevel for it, and then kind of bring the bevel pretty wide. Now drag the cube in here as your object and plug geometry into instance. We're gonna do my scale down like this so we can kind of see everything. We're gonna do my spacing at point one. So now we have created this. We're gonna need a wave texture to create this effect and we'll plug color into the color ramp and the color ramp into the instance on points scale socket. And then if you use the white portion of the color ramp, that's gonna dictate your size, the black and the white. We're gonna go from bands to rings and then X to spherical. And then we're gonna do point one. And now if we bring in our color ramp, something like this, you can actually watch the phase create the effect we're trying to make. And then you can get, just go ahead and fine tune this effect. So I'm gonna bring my uh, spacing here to 0.2 on everything. We're gonna get everything to almost touch here. And then you can play with this phase offset. So we can bring in this color ramp to kind of do our magic like that. Again, phase offset creates the effect. And then all we have to do is loop the animation. So we'll just go ahead, get a timeline and looping. The wave texture is the easiest thing on earth. We're gonna keep it at 250 frames. 
go back to frame one, I mean to frame zero, hit I, go to the end, and then type in, let's do four asterisk pi, enter keyframe, and now we have animated this really cool effect that brings it in just like that. And that's it. That's the note I wanted to talk about. It's cool. Add a lot of extra things that you didn't really need to know, but the more the merrier. I hope you have some fun with this. Uh, but that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to check out real-time materials that help support the channel and help me have time to find really cool things like this. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.